Let us say with all our soul and with all our mind, let us say. Lord, have mercy. O Lord Almighty, the God of our fathers, we pray thee, hearken and have mercy. And for all our brethren in Christ. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Again, we pray for this country, its president, for all civil authorities, and for the armed forces. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Holy Church, and for all our fathers and brethren, the Orthodox depart of this life before us, who here and in all the world lie asleep in the Lord. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Again we pray for mercy, life, peace, health, salvation, and visitation for the servants of God, the brethren of this holy temple and for the pardon and remission of their sins. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Again, we pray for those who bring offerings and do good works in this holy and all venerable temple, for those who labor and those who sing, and for all the people here present who await thy great and rich mercy.
thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and to ages of angels. And he was commissioned at that time to serve the church in the Midwest. And it was during those 20 years of ministry, in conjunction with the World's Fair, that the popular church, the beautiful church, the cathedral of our Orthodox Church in America in Chicago, Holy Trinity, was built. And it was designed by Sullivan. Uh, it's, a, it's one of the landmark churches uh, in the United States. 
But even more than that, as the hymns spoke about, he imparted to people the faith. Not just the Russian emigres, not just the other Orthodox people that were scattered throughout Chicago, but he was truly a missionary. He had a heart for Jesus Christ and wanted to share the gospel with the people. And so he has a legacy of being one of the missionary priests of North America that came from Russia to not only, again, take care of the flock that was here, but to care for the people that he encountered. And so before he came, he did something that's super important. He learned the English language. How can you go someplace and not speak to the people in their own language? It's like me showing up in a room and expecting a bunch of people that speak Portuguese to sort of learn English for my sake. It just doesn't make a lot of sense. And so he learned the English language and was able to communicate and to share the gospel with the people in the Midwest and most specifically around the Chicago area. I want to share with you one of the hymns that we sang this night about the holy Hiramart or John. And it says the following, Rejoice, O city of Chicago. Leap for joy, O Tsarsko Selo. That's in St. Petersburg. You have shown, you have shared in the blessed presence of the holy higher martyr John, a faithful and righteous priest of Jesus Christ, zealous teacher and defender of the truth, enlightener of the confused, consoler of the distraught, rescuer of those who had gone astray, true shepherd and pastor of the flock of Christ, who, with the holy patriarch Tikhon and the holy higher martyr Alexander, illumined North America with the rays of orthodoxy, who struggled unto death in defense of the faith in Russia against the godless power. With them, he prays for the peace of the world and the salvation of our souls. So you can hear in that hymn that he was a contemporary of St. Patriarch Tikhon of Moscow, who would later himself suffer at the hands of the communists uh, after he was made the patriarch, after the restoration of the patriarchate, right around the time of the revolution, and Alexander Hotovitsky, who labored in New York City. That he came to this John of Chicago, came to this land and served it well, but God's providence called him back to Russia. And he went to St. Petersburg, and he served the church there in the midst of a really difficult time in the life of the church in Russia, because the flames of revolution were beginning to blow and grow in Russia. And ultimately, in St. Petersburg, as the Bolsheviks were just coming to sort of a fever pitch in October of 1917, he began to lead the people in prayer. And he would hold these, night, these vigils with the people. They would gather in the church and they would pray for the, for the calm and the peace of their city and the calm of the peace that of the people that were in it. And many people went home on that October 31st in 1917, but John remained. And he was told by the Bolsheviks to stop this ridiculous praying, and he refused. And for that, the Bolsheviks beat him up, mocked him, and dragged him through the city, calling on him to renounce his faith, and he would not. And so he was a faithful witness to Jesus Christ unto the very end. Brothers and sisters, Christianity is not always safe. It puts us in the crosshairs of the evil one who hates the truth that comes with Jesus Christ. Our church is surrounded by this cloud of witnesses, these martyrs, who in the face of godlessness, in the face of being told to choose between life or death, Say you're asking the wrong question and looking at it in the wrong way. For, to, for me to die is gain. For me to die is to be with Christ. And these martyrs and the martyr John Kuchorov answered that call and stands for us as a witness. Someone who labored in America, who dealt with the industrial revolution and all the conveniences that we have, and remained faithful to the gospel.
and he stands as a witness and as an, uh, as an intercessor for us. So as we celebrate his memory, let's also imitate his life and continue to glorify the kingdom of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Glory to Jesus Christ. Glory to you Through the prayers of our Holy Fathers, Lord Jesus Christ our God, have mercy on us and save us. Uh, but last evening, Evelyn Honifer, a longtime and beloved member of our community, fell asleep in the Lord. 